Um, so the last time we looked at LU decomposition via Gaussian el elimination, and we outlined the procedure and uh, I also showed you an example. And towards the end of the last class, I told you about uh, some numerical issues that arise in the uh, LU decomposition, namely that if, uh, if there's a very small number that appears as a pivot element, then uh, inverting that when you compute it using a finite preci precision machine can lead to incorrect uh, answers. And so that motivates us to look at LU decomposition with pivoting. So pivoting is the process by which you try to stabilize the uh, LU decomposition process. And the way we do that is through the use of these permutation matrices. So just very briefly, a permutation matrix, uh, this, there are many types of permutation matrices, but for the purposes of this discussion, we will discuss about permutation matrices where a pair of rows or a pair of columns are getting exchanged. So we have the notation P and pi. P is the identity matrix with two rows, say row I and J being permuted or exchanged. And uh, pi is the identity matrix with columns I dash and J dash being permuted or exchanged. Then if you define P and pi this way, then if you consider P A for any matrix A, it exchanges the I and J rows of A. And A pi similarly exchanges the I dash and J dash columns of A. So, I mean, permutation matrices have many properties, including these, and uh, also, so I'll just say other properties. Of permutation matrices. So, um, for example, P transpose equals P inverse. Okay, so it's a, it's a real orthogonal matrix. And uh, uh, the product of permutation matrices is another permutation matrix. And um, uh, this, these, these permutations that I discussed here are called exchange permutations. Which basically exchanges exactly two uh, rows or two columns of uh, the matrix. It involves swapping two rows or columns of the n cross n identity matrix. And such matrices have the property that P squared equals P equals identity matrix. So basically, if you exchange two columns and then you exchange them back, you get back the original matrix. So if you apply P twice with an exchange permutation, you'll get the original matrix back. So P squared is the identity matrix or P equals P transpose because P, so this means P is its own inverse, but P inverse equals P transpose, P transpose for any permutation matrix. So P equals P transpose for such matrices. So in other words, if I take the N cross N identity matrix and exchange any two rows or any two columns, I'll still get a, uh, I'll get, a, I'll still get a symmetric matrix. And uh, uh, and that matrix is uh, its own inverse. Okay, that's a special property of exchange permutations. Okay, so now to connect this to the Gaussian elimination uh, based LU decomposition procedure. So like the previous development, suppose uh, K minus one stages of the Gaussian elimination have been done. And we'll describe how to proceed with the kth stage. And 
from if you start with k equal to 1 2 up to n minus 1 then you get the entire lu decomposition so suppose k minus 1 stages of Gaussian elimination are done. That is to say, we have got this matrix A k minus 1, which is equal to m k minus 1. Earlier I had m k minus 1 all the way down to m1 times A is what I had as AK minus 1. It is a pre-multiplication by these Gauss transforms. But now I, I can, I'll have a post, per potential permutation that was done at the K minus 1 stage. PK minus 1 all the way up to M1, P1, A, Pi 1. And then at the second stage, I may have to do uh, another uh, uh, column exchange that is Pi 2 up to pi k minus 1. So these are the exchanges that I have done so far. So I haven't told you how to do these exchanges, but it will become clear as soon as I tell you what exchange we will do with the ak minus 1 matrix to get the akth matrix. Now this matrix by construction has the form, um, it has a11 k minus 1 at the top left, and this is upper triangular. And I have A12 K minus 1 and then 0 here and A22 K minus 1. And this is K minus 1 rows and this is N minus K plus 1 rows. And similarly, this is K minus 1 columns and N minus K plus 1 columns. And now, in order to describe what I want to do next, I'll consider the entries of A22 K minus 1. So let's call them <coughs> It starts with index K, AKK of K minus 1, AKN, because this is the, the first row of A22 K minus 1, is the kth row of this matrix a k minus 1. So this k minus 1 and a n k of k minus 1, a n n of k minus 1. So this is what we'll call the entries of this matrix. So basically when I apply m k, what should happen is this entry will remain as it is and everything else below this will become zero. But we want to do this in a stable way, meaning that among all these entries here, we want to get the largest magnitude entry and place it as the top left entry, because we are going to be dividing all these entries by that entry, and then doing row, row operations to make zeros appear in the below the, the, below the diagonal, below this entry. So, um, so to, to annihilate Um, the first column below the first row of A22 K minus 1 in a stable way Choose, we'll call it P tilde K and Pi tilde K of size N minus K plus 1 cross N minus K plus 1. So basically the point is that suppose some entry over here 
is the largest entry. Then what you have to do is you have to exchange these two rows so that this entry goes up here. And then you should exchange these two columns so that that entry uh, ends up over here. Right, so if I do one row exchange and one column exchange, I can take whatever entry I find to be the biggest and make it appear as the top left entry. So you do this such that the top left entry of PK tilde A2 to K minus 1 Pi K tilde has the largest absolute value among all elements of A2 to K minus 1. Then we find MK as before. So um, we saw the last time that we will find uh, MK by uh, it will be a matrix with uh, ones along the diagonal, zeros above the diagonal and minus LK plus one comma K up to minus LN K and below the uh, main diagonal of the Kth column with LK chosen to be equal to um, AIK of K minus 1 divided by AKK of K minus 1. So all this we discussed the previous time. So then we will have AK is equal to MK PK AK minus 1 times pi k which will be of the form a11 k which is now k cross k a12 and upper triangular 0 and a22 k Okay, and uh, of course, uh, PK is related to this PK tilde just by slapping on an identity matrix of size K minus 1 like this. PK is equal to IK minus 1, 0, 0, P tilde K. And similarly, Pi K is i k minus 1 0 0 pi tilde k this just ensures that the first k minus 1 rows and columns of uh, a k minus 1 remain untouched okay so keep in mind that the exchanges are happening over entries uh, columns and rows of AK. So this, when I multiply this PK times AK minus one, it's going to exchange rows of AK minus one, but it will exchange rows starting from the Kth row up to the nth row. It will not touch the first K minus one rows of AK minus one. And similarly, right multiplying by pi K will exchange uh, columns starting from the Kth column to the nth column. It won't touch the first K minus one columns of AK minus 1. 
Okay, so we'll come back to that point later. So I'll put a star over here. So this is this is basically fine. So we can execute this, and uh, at the end, what will happen is that um, since a k is of this upper triangular form, if I do n minus one steps of this kind of thing, I'll get an upper triangular matrix out here. So, but then I need to still show that this matrix, which is uh, the pre-multiplying matrix, is of the form L, which is a lower triangular matrix. So that when I do um, when I pre-multiply by L inverse then I get A is equal to L U, where L is a lower triangular matrix. And this U that I have over here is an upper triangular matrix. So we still need to discuss how that matrix will end up becoming lower, lower triangular. So in the kth stage, what we have is A K is equal to I'm just copying from here, um, M K P K, but A K minus one itself is M K minus one, P K minus one, A K minus two, okay, which is uh, uh, M K minus two, P K minus two, etc. So this keeps going. So I have M K P K, M K minus one, P K minus one, all the way down to M one P one A, and then there is a pi k, but when I substitute for a, a k minus 1, I would have got m k minus 1, p k minus 1, all the way down to m1, p1, a, pi 1, pi 2, all those things will follow. So there's pi 1, pi 2, up to pi k. So this is the structure of a k, this is how it is obtained. Now, uh, because these p i's are exchange matrices, uh, we have that p i squared is equal to the identity matrix. So, so using this, we have a k is equal to, I'll still keep m k, m k, p k, and then um, m k minus 1. What I'll do is, before I write PK minus one, I'll write PK, PK, PK minus one. So PK, PK is the identity matrix. And then I have MK minus two and so on, all the way down to, so, okay, maybe just to illustrate this thing, I'll uh, just write one more term here so that it will be clear. So there's PK, PK times, so this is the identity matrix. Okay, so this is the identity matrix. PK minus one, and then I have MK minus one. And then instead of writing M, uh, PK minus two, I'll write um, PK minus one, PK. Then I'll multiply again by PK, PK minus one, and then I'll write PK minus two, and so on. Okay, so what I'm doing here is notice that this has the structure PK minus one, MK minus one, PK minus one. And then I have PK, um, sorry, if I combine this together as well, then I get this form PK, PK minus one, MK minus one, PK minus one, PK. Here I have MK, PK minus one, PK. And then the next term will be PK minus, PK, PK minus one, PK minus two, mk minus 3 and then there will be a pk minus 2, pk minus 1, pk. So all of these things becomes like a symmetric product. And so this will go all the way down to um, just before the last term I'll have like a p2 m1. Then instead of writing uh, m1 p1 a, I'll write it as um, P2, P3, up to P, K, times P, K, P, K minus 1, P2, P1, A. Okay, and then I still have my Pi1, Pi2, up to Pi, K.
So I'll just uh, rewrite this so that it is clear how I'm splitting this product. So I'll write this as um, mk times these three terms together pk mk minus 1 pk times pk pk minus 1 mk minus 2 pk minus 1 pk times just one more term for the sake of completeness pk pk minus 1 pk minus 2 mk minus 3 pk minus 2 pk minus 1 pk and so on and down all the way down to the last term will be p2 m1 times P2, P3 up to PK times PK, PK minus 1 down to P1, A and I still have pi 1, pi 2, pi K. Okay. And so now what I will do is I'll let MI dash be equal to sir yeah sir uh, in the first line that uh, you would a k uh, after uh, after you using p i square is equal to y um, let me just repeat how p k times p k is coming because at that place p k minus one was there so it may be p k minus one times p k minus one that is uh, no, see, I can insert a PK times PK wherever I want. It's the identity matrix. Yeah. So I'm inserting it here. Okay, got it. Okay, so PK, PK minus 1 up to PI plus 1 times MI PI plus 1 up to pk so i'll define this to be mi dash then after n minus 1 stages what we have is that a n minus 1 which is an upper triangular matrix is equal to m n minus 1 dash m n minus 2 dash all the way down to m 1 dash times so I, I have all this together till here that will give me m 1 dash and this product which will be p n minus 1 down to p 1 I'll call that p and then this is a and then this product pi 1 through pi n minus 1 i'll call that pi and this is an upper triangular matrix u okay p is equal to p n minus 1 p n minus 2 all the way down to p1 and pi equals by one yes uh, sir in a n minus one shouldn't an uh, a m n minus one be multiplied because in a k there was m k being multiplied uh can you say that again what is the question okay um in a k sir the term is m k p k m mm. k minus one p k so mm. In a n minus one, there should be an a m n minus one there, right? There will be an m n minus one, correct? Is 
So you are right. It will be m n minus one, and that's why m n minus one dash is defined to be. So okay, I think you can. I understand your confusion. So if I want, so in the so notice that the first so this thing is true for i being less than k. Okay, at i equals k, these matrices won't be there. I can't go to uh, the so if I take uh, oops. Yeah, so let's let's maybe clarify this point. Oops. Okay. So if I take um, if I take k equal to n minus one because I want a n minus one. Okay. So then. Um, I'll write over here k equal to n minus one. Then I have m i dash is equal to p n minus one all the way up to p i plus one times m i times p i plus one. All the way up to p n minus one. Okay, and so notice that if I take i equal to n minus one, then I will get m n minus one dash, and I have m n minus one here, but this should be p n minus one plus one, which is p n. But there is no matrix p n that we are using in this process. So these matrices will not be there for the m mi n minus one dash. So m n minus one dash is actually equal to m n minus one. There is no matrices multiplying these. But if I take m n minus two dash, that is going to be equal to p n minus one, m n minus two, p m n minus one, and so on. Does that clarify your question? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. So basically, what we have then is, um, so we have this product of all these matrices. Okay. That times P A pi is an upper triangular matrix. So for a moment, let's uh, assume m n minus one dash n minus two dash m one dash is equal to L inverse, and which is a lower triangular matrix. Okay, just for a moment, imagine that this is true. I'll show you why this is true uh, in a <coughs> in a minute. But assume that this is lower triangular. Then what we have is, if I multiply by uh, L inverse, um, on um, uh, if I multiply by L on both sides, then I will have um, L times U is equal to P times A times pi. So it is an LU decomposition, not of A, but it's a, the LU decomposition the product of L and U gives you a row and column permuted version of A. Okay, but I still need to show that this product is going to be lower triangular. Now, um, the point is that if each of these matrices were lower triangular, then of course their product would also be in fact, they are all uh, they are all matrices which we defined. Uh, the original M case that we defined had were unit lower triangular. So we'll we'll end up showing that these matrices are also unit lower triangular. So it is sufficient 
to show that mi dash is unit lower triangular okay and uh, the but then this is simple because these permutation matrices like i mentioned at that star the permutation matrices only touch the rows and columns corresponding to um, uh, so in the k minus 1 th stage they they will only exchange uh, rows and columns corresponding to the a to 2 k part that is they are not touching the top k minus 1 cross k minus 1 entry so in other words um, uh, so for example if you take um, the the original mi if you remember the original mi was of this form was of this form where I had once along the diagonal, but in the k, uh, so m i right, so ith column. So in the ith column, I had a one here, and then I had some. Uh, let me just go back here in my notes. Um, yeah, it was minus l k plus one or l i plus one i like that, right? i plus 1 comma it's too difficult to write so i'll just say here there's some star here and some star here whatever these entries were non-zero only below this thing everywhere else it was zeros but only these entries were non-zero okay and now what i'm doing in the kth stage is that i am applying an exchange matrix which is exchanging rows and columns corresponding to this part of the matrix. So if I exchange rows and columns corresponding to this part, then um, let's see. So what happens is that um, P matrix so Let's see. So let me put it this way. Suppose I take this matrix with ones along the diagonal and then non zeros only here. OK. So OK, maybe it's even easier if I take a slightly more concrete thing. So let me write it as one A, B, C and then zero, one, zero, 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 one, zero and 0, 0, 0, 1. And suppose I had exchanged some two rows, let's say these two rows, and then um, say, so I need to bring the largest element to the top left. So um, uh, what? Yeah, so it will be, it won't be like this. So I have to look at uh, A22 of uh, K minus one, and I'll be trying to bring the largest element over here. So the exchange will be of the form where I would exchange maybe these two rows, and then um, uh, I have to exchange some uh, pair of columns, but of course I'm trying to bring it, bring the largest entry over here. So maybe it is an exchange of these two columns. Now, if I exchange these two rows, what will happen is I'll get B, OK, let's write that. B 0, 1, 0 out here, and then A 1, 0, 0 here, and then 1, 0, 0, 0 here, and C 0, 0, 1 here. And now let's say I exchange these two uh, columns. Um, then I'll end up with. Yeah, so I'll, I'll I'll put this here one. If I exchange these two columns, I'll end up with 
No, this is not how you go. One second, this is not correct. Let me let me write it in a different way. So. The P matrix, it exchanges. Um, rows of MI with ah, okay, I think I understood. Um, the point is that MI dash is yeah, so I yeah, okay, my example was okay, what I was doing was not correct. So maybe okay, we'll come back to that. Um, with rows greater than I. And uh, okay, so basically, let me let me put it like this. Suppose I start with this matrix zero zero zero, a one zero zero, b zero one zero, and c zero zero one. Then remember that the mi dash is obtained by doing p. A uh, P M I times P I. So if you go back here, notice that the the core structure is something like this: P I plus one M I P I plus one, that kind of thing. Okay, and P I plus one is going to exchange rows in M I corresponding to um, uh, some pair of rows which are greater than I. So basically, what you do is uh, here. Uh, in this structure, what it will do is you pick uh, two rows. Um, the it's the same matrix P i and P i plus one that's going on the left and right. So suppose you exchange these two columns, then you will also be exchanging the first and third column. You will be exchanging the first and third row. If I do this, let's see what happens. When I exchange the first and third row, I'll get B010, A100, and 1000, and C001 here. And now if I exchange these two columns, then this column appears here. I'll have, so I still have the same. Just a second. What am I doing wrong here? Ah, okay. <sighs> I have to correct myself again. Anyway, let's see. So um, the exchange is going to be among rows of MI with indices greater than I. So this, this part is not going to get touched. It's going to be a pair of rows and columns among these. So if I take, let's say, these two rows and I exchange them, then let's see what I get. I'll get a matrix. One zero 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 um, C zero zero one and then B zero one zero and A one zero zero. And now I have to exchange the same columns because it's PI plus one and my PI plus one. So I have to exchange the same. Um, second and fourth column of this matrix. If I exchange these two, then what I will get is the matrix um, 1 C B A 0 1 0 0 0 0 1 0 and 0 0 0 1. Exactly. So this is the idea. So all that happened by this pi i plus p i plus 1 m i times p i is that the entries a and c got exchanged. Otherwise, the structure is exactly retained. So that is the basic idea here. 
So, for example, suppose PI plus 1 exchanges rows LM, which are both greater than I. Then PI plus 1 MI times PI plus 1 is the same as MI but with elements LK, um, L, K, L. So this is a bad notation because I had written L, I, J to be the entries of this matrix M, I. But anyway, it's L, K, L. So let me say this is L dash, then K, L dash, and L, K, M exchanged. Or in other words, um, this matrix PI plus 1, MI PI plus 1 is unit lower triangular. And uh, that means that all MI dashes are unit lower triangular and uh, this means that L inverse is unit lower triangular which implies that L is also unit lower triangular. Okay, so that completes this description to say that this, uh, this process uh, even with pivoting gives you uh, an LU decomposition not of A but of P A pi, where P is a permutation, P and pi are permutation matrices.